Welcome to As I Live and Grieve, a podcast that tells the truth about how hard this is. We're glad you joined us today. We know how hard it is to lose someone you love and how well-intentioned friends and family try so hard to comfort us. We created this podcast to provide you with comfort, knowledge, and support. We are grief advocates, not professionals, not licensed therapists. We are you. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to As I Live and Grieve. We have a great guest with us today. We have searched a long time for a guest to discuss this topic, and we are delighted today to have Elise Falzone with us. And I'm going to thank her for being with us and ask her to tell you just a little bit about herself. Thank you so much, Kathy. No pressure, right? You've been searching for <laughs> no so pressure. long. <laughs> right. No pressure at all. <laughs> no pressure. So thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Um, crystals are a really beautiful tool. And I didn't understand my connection to crystals um, until later on in life. But I can remember as a little girl collecting rocks, collecting stones, making cool little, you know, arrangements with them and not really realizing till later in life, you know, what they really were. Um, my journey with, uh, I guess, the, the, the world beyond started when I was really, really young. I was seeing things and hearing things and feeling things beyond what I could physically see with my eyes. And I'm so grateful that my mom was curious about that with me because it really supported me in, in continuing to foster those gifts, foster these spiritual gifts that quite honestly, we all have access to. We just don't always know it. And sometimes we get, we get more um, access to them through a car accident or through a near life, you know, near, near death experience through the passing of a loved one. For me, when I was 13 years old, I had metal toxicity in my body. I had braces that the metal from the braces had actually seeped into my bloodstream. I got really, 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 really ill for a very long time. And after about a year of specialists and children's hospitals and doctors, my mom finally took me to like a holistic practitioner. And within 15 minutes, she said, you're metal toxic. And I started going through this process of detoxing. And the woman was a godsend. She is the one who started teaching me about these like philosophies such as color therapy, crystals, chakra alignment, different things that were outside of the norm, but that actually helped me to tune into my own being. And inside of that, I heard a very loud voice. I believe it to be God's voice that said to me, you are a healer. And it was in that moment when I was 13 or 14 years old that I knew that there was something about this, that I would one day be helping people heal, that I would be helping to do something. But then I got really afraid of the gifts. So I said a prayer. I was like, <laughs> okay, God, take these gifts away. Just take it away. I can't handle it. I didn't know it was light, dark. Otherwise, it can be, it can be confusing. And so there was a period of time where you know, I was watching, uh, oh my gosh, what was it? Um, John, what was his last name? The Crossing Over. Um, I was reading like Sylvia Brown psychic book. I was like into all of that. I was loved all the mediumship shows where people would talk to their loved ones who had crossed over. I was always so interested in that. And I just kept praying when the time is right. I know it will come back when the time is right. I know it will come back. I was a dancer and gymnast. I've always been really in tune with my body. Um, 2010 was my big wake up call and that was melanoma skin cancer. And, um, it was in that moment that I recognized it's time for me to surrender and stop fighting life, like fighting against it, that it's time to start going with the flow. Um, so that really was the time where everything started to open up. I started, you know, my teachers, my mentors started showing up. And I started to understand how connected we are to nature, how connected we are to earth, how connected we are to our intuition. 
and thus opened up a whole new world of my own spiritual practice and awakening as well as you know guiding and teaching through that and it's been a, a myriad of adventures and retreats and finding you know from that space and of course more more tragedy along with it that has just continued to to Certainly. peel my onion open if that makes sense Certainly. It does. It makes perfect sense. And it, you said a whole new world. And I, in my head, I hear the princess from Aladdin singing a whole new world. Whole I, new I think world. that, I think that, yeah, there you go. But that's what it made me think of. Um, and one of the reasons that we wanted to introduce the concept of using crystals for healing is because grief sucks, plain and yep. simple. That's it. It is probably one of the human conditions, if you will, that there's certainly no cure for, that you cannot get over it. You can't heal totally from it. You'll never yep. be the same person again. So as we think about our, the paths that we have traveled ourselves, I know that sometimes the symptoms of grief, you just get so caught up in them that you're almost willing to consider anything, just something, find me something that's going to help me, something that's going to either make me understand more or comfort me or whatever. And that's why we have had such a diverse list of topics. So crystals, I know, have the power to heal if you know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, you need to find someone who does. And that, Elise, is what has led us to you. So we're not looking for suggestions on specific crystals that are going to magically take our grief away. Right. We know that's not a realistic thought. But can crystals help those that are grieving? And how do they help? Why do crystals help people? I love this question. Yeah, there's um, there's a lot of ways that we can approach this answer. I think the first one that feels the most um, appropriate is that crystals are first and foremost something tangible. When we are moving through grief, it can feel like a very untangible time. We can feel undone. We can feel like there's nothing stable. And so a rock is part of the earth that holds us. So the simple philosophy that it, it quite literally is our foundation, that is one piece and reason why crystals can be so supportive. Number two, you know, depending on what faith level each of you listening are at, God has created this, this beautiful world around us. And so there is a living, breathing energy that is, that's in these crystals. Just like if you were to hold a flower, we gift flowers for birthdays and celebrations and funerals. And when someone's ill, when you want to, you know, love. So flowers are a piece of the earth, just like crystals are. So crystals have this energy if we want to call that we all we all vibrate at a certain energy and crystals have their own independent gifts if you will each crystal each stone each different one each different color has a purpose and a reason these stones have been around on our planet way before we ever were so they hold all of this information, all of this history, all of this loving, loving or trauma, whatever it is, it has, it has been made by pressure. It has been made by the elements. What a gift it is to hold a crystal. We don't always think about that, right? We might think, oh, that's, that's something for like people who are far out. And yet it is the most tangible thing that we could hold. And so when we do that, like I'm, 
I know when you're listening, you're not going to be able to see, but I'm holding what's called a black tourmaline, which is a very grounding stone. Any of the black stones are very grounding, right? They bring me back to earth. So in this conversation, we're, we're new friends together. So for me, in this moment, I said, okay, what crystal wants to be with me as I go into this call? And the black tourmaline was here so that I could feel grounded and supported. So the black stones are really supportive if you just want to feel like down, like you, let me rephrase that because we don't want to emotionally feel down, <laughs> but energetically, we want to calm the nerves. We want to calm the anxiety. Right, right. And so I want to like root, I want to root in. And so what do I do? I pick up a darker colored stone to root, to feel grounded. It's like making sure your feet are firmly planted. Right. Make yes. sure you stand something solid and not something that the bottom is going to give out any second. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the other question, I don't know, you know, it, a lot of people will ask me on this journey, well, I don't want to pray to crystals. I'm not praying to crystals. That's not the point of this. This isn't to replace prayer or to pre replace whatever faith, based practice is supporting you during your grief. This is just an addition to it. Bring it in as a tangible thing, just like you were to squeeze an anxiety ball, you know, the squishy anxiety ball. Anxiety ball. You can hold that crystal and feel its presence. And if you've never played with crystals or never gone into a crystal shop or gone mining for your own crystals, just go do that one day. And pick up one that's blue and one that's yellow or one that's blue and one that's black and put one in one hand and put one in the other hand and close your eyes, take a breath and see if you can feel a difference because they do offer different things, which is so cool, I think. Now, not just the feeling of it when you're closing your eyes, but what about the like the color that would attract you? and pull you to it, that energy? Yeah. Good question. So um, if you are familiar with the chakra system, we, ha we have seven main chakras. You know, it goes from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo or purple to like a clear, um, depending on, you know, how it's, how it's shown. But that sounds a lot like a rainbow. It is. It is very much like a rainbow. Okay. We eat the, the rainbow in the foods. There's a rainbow of stones that will help us for different things. You know, um, like carrots help our eyes. And, you know, the green is really good. The deep green is good for iron when we're talking about eating foods. So it's the same type of concept with crystals. The red stones or the black stones are going to be the ones that are at our, what's called like our root chakra. So deep in the root, this is going to deal with stability, financial flow, relationships. Our orange stones that you may find are going to be in the womb space. So possibly um, those who are moving through, um, you know, digestive issues or um, you know, getting nauseous from this experience of grief, an orange stone could be really, really supportive for that. The yellow is really great for um, the I am center. It's it's your like kind of power center of who you are. So that's yellow. You know, the the green is your heart. So when you're feeling that heart, green stones and pink stones are going to be your heart stones. And then we have our throat, which is blue. So blue is like, how do we flow our communication? Are we getting stumped in how to even go out in public after grief? How do we, how do we answer people when they're asking us questions about what may have occurred? Blue stones are going to help with that. Um, purple stones are our, what's considered our third eye or our ancient wisdom, our knowledge. You know, if we're feeling mental confusion, the blue, the kind of like bluish purple stones are really great. And then the clear stones are really about our connection to spirit, you know, our connection to God and spirit. And um, those can be also like the lighter blues. Um, there's a really beautiful stone called a celestite stone. 
And it's a great stone to connect with your angels. It's a really great stone if you're wanting to call your loved one who is crossed over um, to come be close with you. Um, so there's there's a myriad of stones that deal with color. Um, Ooh, I just looked that and up and it's pretty. <laughs> it is so pretty. It I is so pretty. pretty. It's so pretty. Oh. The celestite is such a beautiful stone. Yeah. It, it just feels angelic when you yeah. see it. Um, and I will say this too, uh, before anybody is like, oh my gosh, this is so much information. What do I do? Breathe first and foremost, take a breath. You don't have to know all the things to have the crystals support you. You can walk into a store, just like Stephanie said, what if I'm just called to a particular color? What if I just want that color? That color right there, that stone. I don't know what it does. I don't know why I want it, but that's the one I want. Trust that. That is your intuition guiding you forward to take that stone. You don't need to know what it does. Just like all three of us on this line, Kathy, Stephanie, and myself, we all have different vibrations. We've got different personalities. We vibrate differently. We're going to attract different things in our life because we're unique. The stones are the same way. They are unique. So trust if you've been drawn to it, take it on a date, take it home with you, date that particular <laughs> stone for a little bit, you know, just be with it, hang out with it. How do you feel with it? Is it lightening your mood? Does it, does it help you to relax? Just trust. That's what I got to say. Just trust. You don't need to know all the answers. I, I love this. I, I really do. I, I love this because if you, if you start, and go to one of my one of my best friends google and you just start looking crystals and you start looking them up very quickly you'll see well this one is for this and this one is for this and then you get caught up in all that so i love the idea of just going and let your intuition guide you yeah on what stone or stones and then i love the take it on a date <laughs> now i have i've also read and seen that when you acquire a crystal whether you buy it or find it mine it whatever that there's a process you have to do so that it will release its energy or something is, yeah can you tell us about that or is there something we should do to any crystal that we do acquire yeah that's a really great question as well so because these stones have been in a myriad of places touched by however many people they've been touched by. What we want to do is to clear the crystal when we receive it. So again, this can be as complicated or as simple as you want to make it. Some people enjoy using something like a smudge stick. So something like sage, um, where you can light the bundle of sage and circle it around the stone. And as long as you have intention with it, it's, Again, it's naturally going to do what sage is supposed to help do is clear. So, okay, stone, I don't even know what you're called right now, but I'm supposed to like do this thing right now. Can you clear your energy? <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Another really beautiful way that you can do this. If you don't have sage, you don't have incense, something like that. You can take the stone out to some dirt or some grass because it just, again, it wants to be in nature. It's part of nature. So let nature cleanse it and heal it. So it can be cleansed in the moonlight. It can be cleansed in the sunlight. As long as you're intentional, I'm taking this stone out. I'm going to leave it in the moon overnight. And in the morning, it will be cleansed for me. I trust whatever the cleansing process is. And it can be that simple. Um, I've also seen, I don't typically do this practice, but, um, something else that's pretty simple. You can get some like Himalayan salt or even some table salt, put salt in a bowl and then place the stone in the bowl for about 24 hours. And that will help. Salt is a um, extractor of negative energy. Well, that just sounds so much easier than what I have read. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Keep it simple. Right. The yeah. other beautiful thing I like to do after I clear it with one of those methods, I will hold it in my hand and I will say a prayer. Thank you so much for finding me. 
I'm excited about this adventure together. God, work through this stone as a healer for me. What is like, what am I meant to learn? What am I meant to heal? What am I meant to receive through this connection? Now, I, when you look up the crystals online and if you go into stores, you usually see them in what I, I want to call rough form um, and all different sizes and everything. It, does it matter the form that they're in? Like, cause I've, I have some as like jewelry for instance, and that when I feel like, like I have one that is a, a dark colored stone, when I feel like I kind of need more grounding and I do feel different when I wear that necklace, does it matter the form that they're in? It really doesn't matter the form. Um, when you go into a store, the more, um, so there's tumbled stones, which are typically the smaller stones that are smooth. And a lot of times they'll be like in the little plastic buckets. They're smaller, they're a dollar to eight dollars a piece, pretty simple. Those are all your tumbled stones. That's a really great place to start for someone who's like newer. Then some of your other stones will be um, what we call raw or rough. And they're literally like cut straight out of the ground. So it's up to you what you feel drawn to. I personally love the rough, raw stone. It feels more authentic to me. It does not matter though. It really does not matter. And I, my first set that I got, you know, was like a little chakra set in a little drawn baggie and they were tiny little tumbled stones. And I used that and I, I would lay down and I would place them on my body or I would hold them in my hand when I was like working or whatever. And then as my collection has grown, um, I just, I really like that raw. I like the raw, the raw rough form. But I will say this, that the, the smooth stones or the tumbled stones that are, that are smaller, you can get them that are like palm stones. So they, they're more like an egg shape and you can place them in your hand and hold them. This is so comforting. So for those of you, right, we're in this conversation of, of support, crystals supporting through grief. I would say a palm stone that's a little bit bigger, it's a little flattened and egg shape or oval shape. You can just hold it in your hand and it feels so good. It feels so comforting. Yeah. She, I know listeners can't see, unfortunately, but she showed us a palm stone. It does look like an egg, although it's flattened. And she's holding it in her palm and just wrapping her fingers around it and just holding it that way. And if you get two of them, you can put one on each hand and just sit with it. Again, it's it's that kind of like, um, you know, with babies, they'll talk about those weighted blankets that help the babies go to sleep having that stone in each hand is just kind of that like extra comfort as if someone's putting their hand on your shoulder saying, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Should it be the same type of stone or does that matter? It doesn't have to be. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. I would also say that um, some stones are com uh, come carved in a heart shape. And those are also really lovely. Um, again, it's just this energy of the heart where they actually are, are designed to, you know, give off that extra little comfort. I don't use them all the time, but when I see a heart stone, I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. I just have that like teddy bear feeling with the stones that are uh -huh. carved in a heart shape. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, um, I have what I call a toddler question, and it's, I call it a toddler question because there's not a lot of point in it. It's a curiosity question, Let's do if it. you will. Are gemstones and crystals the same? That's a great question. So yes, yes, and. So yeah, they're the same. Um but also gemstones could be rubies and diamonds, and they are a little bit different in frequency. When we're talking about crystals, um, I mean, you could work with raw ruby and you could work with raw diamonds. That's not really, I would say, typical when you walk into a crystal store. 
Um, so yes, they are. And there would be, I would say, a category that's just a little bit different that maybe we would not always use in your typical crystal healing world. But you can look up, like, if you're, if anybody is listening and they're curious, like, you can go to a local crystal store metaphysical shop to find these. But you can also look up when your um, city or town or a nearby city or town has um, gem shows, fossil shows. You know, it's really cool. You can go. I'm not super into the fossil thing, but there's some really neat things. You know, shells as well hold the information and the sounds and the, and the stories of the ocean. Some people may be more drawn to the, the shells and the sea glass more than crystals. And that's okay. Those are also beautiful healing tools. Okay. Okay. I, boy, time goes so fast. Um, but, and so I just know that we're going to be inviting you back again, because I know I have more questions here and there, and I'm sure Stephanie does as well. And I know our listeners want more information, but our intention today is to offer our listeners just something else that might provide some comfort. And yes, there's the energy in crystals, as I understand it, and I believe it. Because I have held some crystals in my hand and felt something different. I couldn't describe it necessarily. I couldn't quantify it. But I felt that there was something other than my own feelings going on. Something was trying to bridge a gap, if you will, with me. So if nothing else, if you go to a metaphysical store, go to a crystal store, Find something pretty you like that you can afford, something that calls out to you. And when you're home and you find some of these troublesome memories or feelings creeping in, whether it's guilt, whether it's shame, whether it's loneliness, you know what I'm talking about, every single one of you out there. When you start to feel that, Put this crystal that called out to you in your hand and just sit with it. Pray if you want to do that. Just let your mind clear. Meditate if that's your choice. If nothing else, this stone will help you bring you back into yourself and chase some of those feelings away. I believe this from the bottom of my heart. So before we have to wrap up, and again, you can't see Elise, but she has a huge smile on her face, like, oh, she gets it. She gets it. But before we wrap up, Elise, we want to offer you some time to speak directly to our listeners without us asking toddler questions or leading you with any other questions. And just talk directly to our listeners and tell them what you can offer them if they have more questions or want some additional help. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, Kathy. That was so beautiful what you just shared. Um, I will offer one more thing. You know, the stones in the hands are beautiful and don't be afraid to place it right up against your heart or put your stone under your pillow so you can sleep better. There are so many ways that you can use that stone. Hold the stone with you and you just want to journal out all those feelings Use it as a part of your daily life. Um, I am here for questions, absolutely. Um, these stones offer such a gentle, loving presence. They are the keepers of the stories of our earth. And they are here to support us. So that is just something that I would say, you know, as we close out with that. And um, you know, I'm on social media underscore awaken your soul, um, on Instagram. That's probably the quickest, easiest way to find me. My website, elisefalzone.com. Um, I do have a crystal program. It is not specifically crystals and grief, but if you are feeling super inspired to, to dive into the depths of what crystals have to offer. If you're curious about all the specificities and 
really, really activating them as a, as an active healer in your life. Um, there's going to be a code with the, in, in the show notes here where you can get a beautiful discount on the, um, all about crystals course that I offer. I would Great. just love to bring you in. You know, I, I may be your first, uh, first registrant, who knows? Because <laughs> I, you know, I, I've wanted more information on crystals. But again, every time I go online and try to do it myself, I get so confused by all the information. But this, to me, sounds like such a simple approach that, uh, get, guess what I'm doing tomorrow? I'm going to go find my crystal. I'm going to go find it tomorrow. Wait, and I have to work. There I are come. many reasons for that, but tomorrow's the day I need to find one. <laughs> oh, well, then all right. All right. I'll wait for you, Stephanie. We'll go together. We'll go together. Now, people know that Stephanie and I love to shop together and we love to go on adventures together. But I'll probably bet, you know, a million to one that nobody ever thought that Stephanie and I would say, we're going to go get a crystal today. So, but anyway, I'm. I'm going to, and we're going to invite Elise back for another episode here, maybe in a month or so. And when she comes back, I'm going to have my personal story about the crystal that I got and my experience with it. So Mm -hmm. to our listeners, go buy a crystal. And Ellis, send us an email and let us know if it has offered you comfort. and. Ask questions by email to us so that we'll have all these questions ready for Elise next time. To Elise, thank you again so much. Um, I feel so excited about this episode for many reasons, but I'm going to be greedy here and say primarily because I really feel like you have offered me the right approach to Mm -hmm. working with crystals and seeing what they can do for me. I appreciate that so much. So until next time, everybody, take care of yourself. Stay well. Just keep on moving forward as we all continue to live and grieve. Thank you so much for listening with us today. Do you have a topic that you'd like us to cover or do you have a question from one of our episodes? please email us at info at asiliveandgrieve.com and let us know. We hope you will find a moment to leave a review, send an email, and share with others. Join us next time as we continue to live and grieve together.